When you saw this half track in a previous video, I just pulled the body off it. A lot has happened since then. I took off a few things, I changed a few things, and I put some paint on. If you want to see how that happened, why don't you stick around and I'll show you. Before I decide what I want to do with this engine, um, I've got to figure out how bad it is. I started it once a long time ago, and um, it actually started up, but it knocked and didn't build oil pressure, so I shut it down immediately before I damaged anything. The obvious next step is to pull the pan and look at the uh, rod bearings of the oil pump and see if it just is an oil supply issue or if we actually have bad parts. There's a big blast shield underneath this motor, like a big skid plate, and um, I didn't want to take it off, so I let it sit for a decade or so. Now that I got the body off, it should be a little easier to get to that shield. Even with the body off, access isn't great. The clearance between the block and this uh, nut here is uh, minimal. At least we can do it now. I did not want to do this from underneath. Got it. Now before we take this pan off, we got to play a game. The what comes out game. Um, it's been well over 10 years since I even touched this motor. And uh, I didn't actually drain the oil then, I just added some on top. So, will it be solid, liquid, water, oil, or something else? And we have sludge and water. Actually, not that much water. A few chunks. Chunks. Chunk, chunk. Now that hole is big. Much bigger than the amount of oil that's coming out. So there's definitely a pile of sludge on the bottom of this pan. Drain a while. This is going to take a while. This is uh, draining pretty slow. We'll come back later, see what we got. Oh, one bolt I forgot. Ah. Apparently I'm taking a shower now. Both under here and afterwards. There's an ear full of dirt. Ah. Alright, let's see what we got now. Yeah, apparently removing all the bolts helps. Mmm, tasty grease. How heavy is this thing? Let's find out the hard way. There we go. Well, it's not ridiculously heavy. It is ridiculously dirty. Now this is what we got in the pan. I have a feeling I know what the oil pressure issue was. There might be a little bit of a clogged pickup issue. Not sure what makes me think that. Just kind of my first thought is that might not flow well. What I'm looking for is a really bad rod. I move side to side. That's normal. Uh, that looks like a little bit of rust on that cam lobe. Let me see here. Huh. I'm going to spin this motor over by hand real slow so I could check each bearing. Oh, 
Oh yeah, that bearing moves. I can move this one up and down on the crank kernel. So that bearing is shot. Now if I start this motor, I'm probably gonna destroy that crankshaft if I don't replace that. Then I'm also seeing rust up top, seeing a few issues. This thing needs to be pulled apart and taken care of. And that ends our day on this motor. Let's throw the oil pan back on. Might as well get what I can out of this pan. Not putting that back in, even if it does have to come apart again. Now, I don't mind playing with a lot of stuff, but this motor is one thing I don't want to ruin. They made some of these, but not volume like you see with car motors. And that was a long time ago, so they're getting hard to find. So I'm not even going to try starting that motor up because I think I'm going to ruin the crankshaft if I do. And uh, I'm not going to make it worse. So I already lined up someone that needs a rebuildable core, and uh, that's going to go to them which means now I need to yank it out. Before I do that though, a few of you asked for a better view of the drivetrain than I did in my last video. So as I pull it out of here to get it ready to pull, we're gonna do a little slow motion drive by. I'm gonna uh, tow it with the tow tug real slow and roll by the cameras so you guys can see uh, everything it's made of. And then I'm gonna yank off that axle. And I'll do it again on the other side so you can see everything. Maybe there are springs holding it on. So far everything on this vehicle has been really heavy. Let's see how the radiator is. Yeah, really heavy. Just not that bad comparatively, but heavier than most. And there's no water at all in it. That thing is bone dry. Almost 85 pounds. Now we're getting somewhere. I can see it better. Huh. Now that's cool. They actually safety wire the bolts for the fan blade. This is aircraft quality stuff here. Those bolts are not coming off and that fan is not going flying somewhere. I guess that's sort of the opposite of an airplane. It's interesting how the timing gear cover is actually bolted directly to the oil filter housing. So that's actually bolted solid on the motor rather than being bolted separate with hoses. Another interesting thing, here's the water pump inlet. The water pumps off to the side of the motor. And then it goes to something over here. I'm not really sure what that is because this up here looks like a thermostat housing. Another piece bolted straight to the block. I'm thinking this might be some kind of heat exchanger between coolant and oil to equalize the temperature. Now I need to take off this hydrovac for the other half track, but the rod that connects the brake pedal all the way to this um, trailer brake controller actually goes through the brackets. So I have to take all that linkage out before I can take these brackets off the frame. Now it looks like there is a long bolt going through this whole hydrovac unit to this nut here and same thing in the bottom. But when I was taking off those nuts, that happened. Yeah, it looks like it's just snapped off on both of them. 
I didn't even put a wrench on those. It just fell off. Since those back ones broke off, I'm just going to undo the front ones because I got to replace them anyway. These clouds are looking a little bit ominous. So, uh, we might be calling it a day here. Uh, I'll just pick up again tomorrow on this thing. The clutch arm is detached, but it's hitting this mount. So we gotta make some a little more clearance here. I removed the smashed up piece of pipe that was here. So hopefully I can get this transfer case to swing that way and get the clearance I need. I was taking off this drag link and I realized that's an actual shoelace. Take a look at the top of that kingpin there. It's a good thing I never got this running and tried to drive it as is. I couldn't get the taper to pop off, so I just undid the drag link and pops off the ball. You can see it's got basically a keyhole shaped slot. The ball goes in there and then you just screw to push it in, and uh, that pushes the ball over here and tightens it up. And you can adjust the play by adjusting that screw. Getting some space here. The brake lines on this chassis look pretty good, so my plan was to reuse them. Then I noticed when I scraped one, that's copper. Um, these are copper brake lines. Those two. I don't know if that was factory or not, but I, uh, I've always been told you're not supposed to use copper for brake lines. At least I'm going to try to take it off without breaking it so I could reuse it if I wanted to. Copper does nice at not rusting. I've got this half track pretty much stripped down to just the chassis. There's one glaring omission. This broken rear axle. I have a spare rear axle, a complete assembly. Now I gotta swap it. Never done that before. How hard can it be? Looks a little heavy though. These axles mount with a massive U-bolt and then a big piece of cast iron holding it straight to the frame. And uh, that U-bolt does not look pleasant to get out. Now my deciding factor is going with what someone else did because on my spare axle, they chose not to undo the U-bolt, but actually took off these big cast iron pieces. And um, I don't know the right way to do this, but since someone else already did it and did it this way, I'm gonna try copying the same way. We'll see how that goes. I got all the bolts loose, I got the brake lines off, and if this were a normal vehicle, I'd be ready to pop those bolts out and just drop the axle down. However, this axle is also held in by rubber bands. Really big, heavy rubber bands. So I can't actually take this axle out right now. 
it's going to stick on those. Which means, now we got to detrack a half track. Take these things off. It's a lot lighter now. Now this either wheel is mounted to this swing arm here, and you can take this bolt and use that to push the swing arm away against the spring and give yourself some slack on these tracks. This is gonna be fun. I think I can get over that top wheel. So uh, I'm gonna call this enough slack for now. I'm gonna try to split this rear idler apart first because uh, it looks lighter. All right, yep, left hand threads. So we tighten them to loosen them. Hey, making progress. Now apparently there's a special tool that went between these bolts that held them apart. Uh, Dave at World War II Restoration sent me a picture of the right one. I don't have it. I'm gonna make something up. I got a piece of clutch pedal arm here. I made one end round, the other end tapered, because I didn't know what dimension to make. And I didn't really feel like measuring it right. So we can just put it in. Now the taper is jammed that up tight, so these can't come together and drop the suspension arms out. So I think we're ready to lift this thing up. Now I just got to do the same thing on the other side. That right there is the bolt that adjusts the tension on the track so I can loosen it up. This time I'm planning ahead. I'm smearing some grease on it. So that way it turns a little easier once it contacts. I'm also going to take these threads and wire brush them a little bit. There's a little oil on. That might make my life easier. I'm going to take a crack at this side. I already have my tools out. Uh, I already loosened up the track. In theory, I will make less mistakes this time. We're going to see how long it takes to take a track off a half track. Starting now.
that's how long it takes. Now I gotta do the axle. Now I was considering putting a floor deck under this axle housing to drop it gently to the ground. That is over five eighths of an inch thick. That thing's heavy, really heavy. We're going bigger than Jack. I'm gonna try and crack these lug nuts while it's still on the ground. I think it'll be easier. Maybe not easier. Wait. These say L on the wrong side. This one has the left hand thread on the passenger side. That's not where it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be on the driver's side. I do have the pinion pointed the right direction. It's not spun around. And these distinctly say R on them. These drums are on the wrong side. Now the guy I got this axle from told me it had a recent brake job. It looks like it definitely had the drums off and they put them on the wrong sides because the left hand thread should be on the driver's side, not the passenger. So, supports the theory that it has new brakes, which might be nice, but I gotta remember to turn them the wrong way. Let's try this again, going the other way. Oh, hey, that's easier. Just work it up a little at a time. there. Oh, I think I might be able to get a bolt in there. One bolt in. Now, not only did that align everything as I drove it in, it added a nifty self-locking feature to the threads. So there'll be automatic self-locking any nut I put on it. I believe the torque value for these bolts, as measured in Ugga Duggas, is all of them. That's all it takes to swap out an axle on a half track. Uh, in case you ever need to do that. Now I need to put those tracks back on, but I'm gonna add one more step in between, because right now I have a lot of access. I think this thing needs a coat of paint. So even with all the nuts cracked loose earlier, I still had to tie the wheel to the frame to keep it from turning so I can take them all the way off, because there's still a little bit of rust here. Now I bought this axle from a guy in northern New Mexico, who unfortunately I never got a chance to meet, because uh, I was in a real time crunch and so I ended up paying his wife, and he hadn't gotten home from work yet. But, kind of regret that. What can you do? Anyway, I don't actually know what this came off of. Basically, what someone had done is taken some half track, chopped it here, kept the track section, slapped a motor on it, and drove it around like a tank with just the steering brakes. Apparently, it was uh, kind of crazy. And that's why they put new brakes on it because that was their steering. So, in theory, this should be a good axle. But I did notice it's a little different than the one I took off. Now this axle has a bolt-on back cover, 
and the brake drums have a large diameter section then they step down to a smaller diameter where the wheel mounts. On the axle I just took out that cover is welded in place and the drums go from the large diameter and they taper down to where the wheel mounts. So I'm thinking this might be a later version but I really don't know. Now I'm on to the paint prep, and uh, paint prep is key, so I'm going to use the good nozzle. There's a big grease clump right here, and I could just paint right over it, but instead I'm going to scrape off the biggest parts of it, and then paint right over it. Now this looks like all the original paint, I noticed this is flaking. There's a big lump here with a big drip right down the side. That's a factory original drip. I'm going to leave that and paint over it. That way you can still see it. All right. I've spent a solid 24 minutes prepping this frame. So uh, pretty much it's about as good as it's going to get. I've got a sneaky suspicion that at some point within the next oh five years sometime in there I'll probably need to replace these tires. I'm not going to worry about masking them at all I'm just going to spray the rim and uh, ignore it because uh, that's easier. That's definitely in the good enough range. I've got one track on. I decided that I had to figure out the procedure and find the best way to do it. And the best time to do that was after dark. So I didn't get a whole lot of good video on that one. But I figured out a lot of ways to not do it. And so hopefully I can do it right this next time. Now before we get to putting that track on, I want to show you something. Take a look at this frame. With one side jacked up, the other side on the ground, there's a lot of twist to it. I don't think the suspension flexes much at all. I have a feeling if you take this off-road, that frame is going to be all your flex. I have to give up on my idea of putting my camper body on it, because a 22-foot long box, you start twisting that, and you're going to rip up everything inside. So uh, that one's out. I've got to come up with a body that has a separate cab and then a bed. And that way they can move independently. That gives me a bit of direction to go with this project. But we'll get to that later. For now, I gotta get a track on there. I know it's gonna take longer than taking a track off, but how much longer? Let's find out. And go.
Hey, as simple as that. I still got to retorque some of the nuts and uh, touch up all the big scrapes in the paint, but track's on there. Now I know that when there's less than a half hour of prep work done, I'm going to have some problems with this paint. That's the reason I picked a really commonly available paint that has even more common touch-up paint available. I know that it's not going to be perfect. I also know I'm going to scratch this up, like all the damage I did when I put on the tracks. There, problem solved. Well, that's it for this video. I have successfully made myself a blank canvas with tracks. And uh, now I get to think about all the fun things I can do with this and what I'm going to add to it. I haven't actually decided. I've got a few ideas. We'll see what ends up happening. But uh, planning the project's half the fun. And I hope you guys are having fun with your projects too. We'll see you next time.